Now before we get into the caramelized bacon onion dip that my family is obsessed with at the holidays and is so good that you can eat it with a spoon, first we need to learn how to make perfect potato chips. And just a heads up, I lost most of the audio on this camera. Be doing a little bit more voiceover on this video. Okay, so for potato chips, we're using russet potatoes. We're gonna need thin uniform strips of potatoes and there is no better tool, unfortunately, than the mandolin, which I hate. This Japanese Ben Renner brand is a great one. And I've got my little protective glove, which I highly recommend. Now you see this side of the mandolin, that's the most unstable in my experience. So I try to keep things on this side. I find my cuts are much more even that way. And we're going for about an eighth of an inch thick. You don't want it too thin or it'll be too frail. And you don't want it too thick, otherwise it won't cook properly. Cut a few slices and just dial in your thickness to start. And then with consistent pressure, confidently push the vegetable through the slicer. And what you'll find is if you push a little harder, you'll get them a little bit thicker. And if you push a little bit lighter, they're gonna be thinner. You'll have to sort of find your own groove and your own pressure to get them as consistent as possible. And then once sliced, get those into some fresh cold water to get some of that starch starting to get rinsed off. And go through, slice the rest of the potatoes. This is a perfect kind of thickness and slice. Nice and even all the way through. Now we wanna slosh that all up, get that starch into the water, and then we wanna rinse that water out maybe three times or until the water runs clean. Then we can add a few tablespoons of white vinegar to it. You don't have to add it. I've cooked it both ways and both ways are delicious, but the potatoes seem to fry up a little bit better when they're soaked in vinegar. So we're gonna let that soak for 30 minutes in the fridge while we slice our onions. We're gonna take about two large onions or four small onions like I have here, and we're gonna go through and just slice them very thin. The more consistent they are, the more even they're caramelized. They will get blended at the end though. And then we're gonna take a package of some bacon and we're just gonna slice those up into little pieces that we're gonna then get nicely crisped. Then we're gonna take a green onion, cut those down into manageable pieces and then slice those down the middle and cut into little strips, toss those into ice water and they're gonna curl up and create a nice garnish for our dip. Get those in the refrigerator till we're ready to use. And now once the potatoes have been soaking, for, we're gonna get them out of the vinegar water bath and onto some paper towels to dry. Now as you'll see, one of these is a little thinner, one of them is a little thicker. You're gonna have different variations to the thickness because you're not a machine and you can't slice things perfectly. That's okay to keep in mind. We're just gonna need to cook them differently. Then we're gonna take some chives and dice them up into a fine dice, about a half cup. And then we're gonna take a few cloves of garlic and slice those up thin. Those chives we save for later, so we're gonna wrap those, throw them in the fridge so they don't dry out, and then we can start cooking the bacon. We've got a large frying pan on the stove. A nonstick will work, but it's not the best because we wanna build a little fond. And we're gonna start this off in a little bit of a high heat just to get the bacon kind of sizzling. And once it starts sizzling, we're gonna drop it down to like a medium low and slowly render down this bacon fat. And you're gonna see a lot of moisture evaporate. The bacon has fat in it, it also has moisture. And so we first have to evaporate that moisture out like we have to do a lot of things before the bacon will be able to start frying in its own fat and getting nice and golden brown. So we're just gonna slowly let that bacon render in the moisture cookout. Now we have this dry sherry, and sherry is a, a fortified wine from Spain that is fortified with like a brandy, and it's great for cooking, and we're gonna use that to deglaze the fawn that builds up on the bottom of the pan. gonna just keep going we're gonna take our time and it's just gonna sit on low and it's gonna just sort of cook in its own fat when I see the fat start to bubble more that's a good indication that we're close so I like to tilt the pan and let the fat pool to one side and let the bacon almost deep fry in it to get really even golden brown around all the bacon you give it a little bit of stir here and there and as the foam of the bacon fat starts to thicken and become more white that's a telltale sign you're getting closer and closer to like a perfectly crisp bacon and there is carryover cooking so you don't want to take it too far in the pan once you can see a nice golden brown across all the the bacon you really want to get that out of the pan and drain the fat and allow the bacon to kind of firm up and crisp as it rests and then we're gonna take a few tablespoons of that bacon fat and get it back into the pan. And then we're gonna toss in our onions. And just like the bacon, we're gonna start them a little bit on a high heat, get them going a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, 
break the onions down from their clumps, get them a little bit softened. And once they begin to soften, we're gonna add that garlic, get that worked in. And once we see the onions just start to darken ever so slightly, we're gonna drop the heat down and just sort of let them cook slowly. After about 30 or 40 minutes of cooking slowly and they start to get a little caramel in color, we're gonna slowly work the heat back up so that instead of just only a jammy onion sweetness, we're gonna build a little bit of roasty caramelization flavors and start to build up a little fond on the bottom of the pan. So it's like a fried caramelized onion I'm going for. And once they're just a really nice color, they're nice and soft and a little bit crispy and the fond is developed on the bottom of the pan, we're gonna start to work in a few tablespoons of that dry sherry, just enough to pick up all of the fond and brown bits stuck to the bottom of the pan. For safety reasons, I always add my alcohol off the heat and then take a flat bottom spoon and just scrape up the bottom of the pan, get the heat back on and just cook that alcohol out until the bottom of the pan is cleaned out and then we're ready to start to move into the next stages. So we're gonna take our caramelized onions and our crispy bacon and add those to a food processor with all that fat that the onions were cooking in. And then we're just gonna pulse it until we create like a chunky paste that still maintains some texture of the bacon. Get that into a bowl. Then we're gonna go in with three quarters of a cup of sour cream and a quarter cup of mayo. You could just do all sour cream if you don't like mayo. And then we're gonna do a cap full of white vinegar, two dashes of Worcestershire sauce, about a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, the diced chives, and then we're gonna mix it all up and give it a taste. It should be salty from the bacon, but you might need to add a little bit of salt. And at this point, it is amazing, but it's gonna be even better if we let those flavors sit for a little bit in the refrigerator. And then I'm gonna pull out my potatoes, and you see this thickness of a potato? This is kind of the ideal thickness you're gonna wanna go for. We're ready to fry. Now the secret to potato chips is the frying temperature. It is not 350, it's not 375, it's not 325. We wanna maintain it around 300 degrees. So I have a thermometer here, I'm keeping track. So if the temperature ever gets too high, I'm gonna drop the temperature down to low. And alternatively, if it gets too low, I'm gonna jack the temperature back up so that I regulate the temperature until the chips are perfectly golden browned and crisp. If a chip is nicely browned throughout, then get it out of the oil until they're all perfectly cooked. Once they get out of the fryer, we're gonna hit them with a small amount of salt. You don't wanna go too hard on the salt. We're gonna add another batch. Keep frying the batches, keep regulating the temperature of the oil. Don't don't let anything get too hot or too cold and you'll have perfectly cooked chips, I promise. You just wanna give them a toss, move them around, make sure you're flipping all the way through the frying so they're all universally perfectly golden brown. And you're gonna have some chips that are a little bit browner, they're gonna have some nice caramelization to them. Others are gonna be lighter and more of a light crisp. I don't know, let's see how we did. Super thin potatoes get this like glassy texture. The thicker ones have this nice brown caramelized texture that I really like. All of it's delicious. Spoon a little bit of that dip on for a little test. Incredible. You hear that crunch? Now we can just plate up those chips with some of that onion dip. Should be nice and thick. A little bit of those curled green onions. And the thicker chips can really dig in, but if you're having any trouble with frailty, you can always spoon the dip onto the chips. And I'm telling you, it's so good, you can eat it with just a spoon. For this recipe and all my holiday recipes, you'll find it in my holiday plan of attack. It's gonna be linked down in the description. It's the ebook version. This book is a one of one, but you have access to all the exclusive videos and holiday content on my website. But that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more holiday recipes, I got four more on the screen, including this beautiful roasted Chateau Brion with a port wine reduction sauce. That is a perfect thing to serve this Christmas.